Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. We are Blue Mountain Properties. We're here today to talk to you about a speculative industrial warehouse that we'd like to uh, develop in Justin, Texas. So part of our team is uh, myself, Brand Duhon, uh, graduate of Texas A&M in 2006 in agriculture communications journalism, working on my master's of land and property development to graduate in 2024. Um, I am a certified project management professional and Six Sigma black belt. Eric. Yes, thank you, Brand. My name is Eric McMurrian. I am a graduate of the accounting and finance uh, department at, out of the University of San Diego. I'm also the business development manager of Singularity Glazing uh, and Bottom Line Realty Advisors, and uh, expecting to graduate out of the Texas A&M University Master of Land and Property Development Program in 2023. And I'm Tony Collins. I graduated from the University of Houston downtown in 96. Uh, I graduated from South Texas Law School in Houston in 2001. And I'm going to get my master's in land and property development at Texas A&M in 23. And I am Chris Buell. I graduated from Texas A&M University in School of Construction Science in 2021. And I'm currently a student at Texas A&M and the Master's in Land and Property Development and will be graduating in, the, in May 2023. Thanks, Chris. So a short executive summary looking at our product, um, tentatively titled the Blue Mount Properties Industrial Complex. It's 600,000 square feet of light industrial with truck courts, cross dock capability and warehousing. Um, as I stated earlier, this is in Justin, Texas, which is in Tarrant County, Texas. Um, we'll provide some more details further in the uh, presentation about the submarket for Tarrant County. Um, the location has great access. It's within five miles of an airport and a rail hub. Our team thinks that the target markets for this are uh, the primary market would be name brand e-commerce, large scale uh, brand companies looking to come in and build some warehousing space or logistics space. Looking at our secondary target market, uh, further mixed use industrial and smaller logistics clients could also use the space that we're planning to develop. And then lastly, the tertiary market would be a small scale industrial or looking at chopping up the warehouse and the complex into smaller uh, sites for more uh, smaller scale clients. One of the best things about this pro product in this location is the fundamental market. Uh, this property is neighbored next to Alliance, Texas. Uh, Alliance, Texas is a development that has uh, been under construction in North Fort Worth and Tarrant County for a number of years. They've created a large space for demand in the market. Um, looking at the graphic to the right here, you can see that uh, the property location is directly in the path of what's been labeled Spouting Explore, Sprouting Explorers and New Wave Growth. So both of those uh, segments of the industry are moving toward the location this property is uh, located. And then lastly, one of the best things about this property is it makes the C, the six S of real estate, or the six most important items in real estate, excuse me, location, 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 and timing, timing, timing. Being next to the Alliance Texas development is in a prime spot for further industrial development. And um, the timing could not be better once you uh, see some of the further facts we have in our presentation. A little bit more about the product. Again, a 600,000 plus square foot warehouse, uh, 3,000, 300,000, square foot of the site will have to be dedicated to detention. Um, we'll have one shell space that, as we said, could be divided up to four tenants in the future. The property is surrounded by four two-way streets and has plenty of space for the parking that we require with 389 car parks, uh, 144 trailer parks, and then also 185 foot truck court uh, to ensure room for delivery. And now I will uh, turn it over to Chris to do the productivity analysis. Thank you, Brand. Um, so the site in its entirety takes up 36.62 acres or 1,500,094,949.40 square feet. 20% uh, of the site is allocated for detention purposes. Uh, and as stated earlier, uh, 
this would take up 7.3 acres or 308, 300, 318,989 square feet. Uh, the vast majority of the site is not located in a FEMA flood zone. Uh, the small portion of the northeast corner of the site sits in a FEMA 100-year flood zone A, which takes up roughly which takes up roughly 15,000 square feet of the site. In reference to the proposed site plan on the various on the previous slide, uh, there will not be any foreseeable issues or encumbrances with the small portion of land being in flood zone A. Clearing and grubbing has been completed for this particular site and is ready to begin mass grading uh, and underground in, uh, utility installation. The land of the, pro the land of the property is HRUS Alliance Phase 2 LLC, which is a general Heinz REIT. Uh, this site is under a public-private partnership uh, meaning the property is privately owned, but will serve functions that will benefit the general public in the means of import and export of goods and services. Uh, this property is commercially zoned to which line industrial falls under such category per the uh, Denton County Unified Development Ordinance, Section 3. Uh, given setbacks for this particular site uh, includes a 10 yard or 10 foot front yard setback, a five foot side yard setback and there is no rear yard setback for this particular zoning classification. Uh, in terms of easements and agreements that encumber, encumber the property, uh, there's a 10 foot electrical easement with Encore Electric that runs from the southwest portion of the property to the northwest portion that is 30,000 square feet in length. Uh, there's also a private drainage easement with SSAE development on the southern portion of the property along FN 156 that covers roughly 23,000 square feet. Uh, the property is also listed as part of the North Lake Logistics Center Plan Subdivision Agreement. That is its specific use is for industrial warehouse. Uh, there's also an existence of a retaining wall facility agreement with the city of Fort Worth uh, for this property for the use of erosion control on the property. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> the, property's, the property's current physical address is FN 156, Justin, Texas, the code 7647. Uh, it serves its main purposes of employment for those out located in the Northeast Tarrant County Alliance submarket. In proximity to adjacent land uses and highways, the property is 4.5 miles from Alliance Airport. Uh, considering the Alliance is heavily used for the transportation of goods and services, this location is desirable for large scale distribution domestically and, and, and internationally. Uh, the property is also located 3.5 miles from BNSF Intermodal, which is also which is a railway that covers 32,500 miles throughout the nation. Uh, lastly, the proposed project is located just one mile from Texas Highway 114 and four miles from I-35 West, which offers strategic advantage advantages in the distribution of goods locally and to the neighboring states. Uh, within the vicinity of the property, there is a presence of various Fortune 500 companies that occupy industrial warehouses for purposes aligned with what we envision for the proposed project. This property also sits in the Northwest Independent, Independent School District Northwest ISD currently has 20 elementary schools, six middle schools, and four high schools. There is also an abundant abundance of retail shopping, restaurants, and it's also next close to Texas Motor Speedway, all within five to 10 minutes of the property. Uh, and as you can see here, this is a map of all the different Fortune 500 companies within the location of the property. Um, as you can see, there's within the direct vicinity of the property, there's Northlink, and then there's Amazon as well. Um, there's JCPenney, FedEx. Um, given this property is a large uh, competitive industrial node uh, with proximity to residential cargo airport and inter intermodal railways and major highways, it'd be a very, uh, it'd be a great spot for our proposed project. And now I'm gonna pass it on to 
Tony to go over market delineation for this project. Okay, well, um, as Chris just brought to your attention, this is an amazing location with the demographics that are uh, phenomenal for this particular type of product. Um, uh, Dallas is the fourth largest metropolitan area in the United States with a population of 7.9 million. It's one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas adding 1.2 million new residents over the last decade. Dallas-Fort Worth's Metro ranked first in terms of industrial development nationwide with 60.7 million square feet underway as of June, 2022. It's the second largest industrial market in the nation with an inventory of over 1 billion square feet just behind Chicago. The Metro has benefited from a diverse set of demand drivers, e-commerce, manufacturing, PL3, which is third-party logistic firms, high inbound migration, and corporate relocations bring so much activity to this particular area that there's a lot of energy and growth that will attract many, many tenants and people that wanna buy. There's 275,800 jobs added just last year. That's a 7.4% growth up 228,300 jobs since February of 2020. That was right when COVID started. Uh, 40 million jobs as of the fourth quarter in 2022. Unemployment rate of 3.5%, that's a nothing. We've got, I mean, it's amazing. It's not as though we're not, not even like we're in a recession. 1.2 million residents were added in the last decade through 2020. 103,000 residents added on the average in the region annually. With this type of demographic that it feeds into having the right number of people. And, you know, as, as Professor Peterson told us, the, um, you can, with the, 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 you have to start low. You have to look at the people that are in the environment, the, the families. It will, with that growth, it's adding to the industrial need for warehousing. With a 5.5% um, fr frictional vacancy, that's optimal. Developers have added 36.1 million square feet in the last 12 months. Dallas-Fort Worth currently leads the nation in industrial development. The net absorption is on pace to reach the second highest level achieved in a decade with 41 million square feet of positive net absorption by the end of the year. The price per square foot has increased from $102 a square foot in early 2021 to $111 a square foot um, at, uh, now. Now, the construction costs are something we have to watch because we're not we're sort of on the border on whether or not we're in a recession or not. And while we have a good land price, what penciled before may not work later. It is critical to keep an eye on the construction costs, but the Fed's raising rates substantially to slow inflation. The phantom supply shortages, and I think they're phantom, um, and I believe that Professor Peterson said so also, of cement and other building materials, making it difficult to pencil a project with a reasonable exit caps, but economists are forecasting only a remote recessionary effect in Texas industrial real estate market due to our favorable economic perks in the region. From January to late October, tenants signed about 2,000 new leases totaling 53.1 million square feet. 108 leases were is 100,000 100, square feet or greater. This accounts for 58% of the total leasing. Demand for grocery stores alone has increased. The projection is very strong for this market. While the development pipeline remains incredibly full and quarterly new supply achieved a new record during the first quarter of 2022, demand appears to wane for the industrial product. However, the headwinds of the consumer sediments affecting the market remain prevalent with the Fed slowing rates increases. Nevertheless, the Texas unemployment is still in, in extremely low and consumer spending is good. So economists say we are experiencing just a mitigation of growth, not a slowdown. Thus, it's foreseeable that the industrial demand will remain strong and it's boasted by the tailwinds of Texas strength. And I believe that, Brand, you're gonna take it from here. Yes, ma'am, thank you. So with that being said, we wanted to do an economic base analysis to see who our potential clients could be for 
this product. Um, we use Bureau of Labor Statistics information to calculate the economic basis in Dallas as mining, wholesale, transportation, information, education, healthcare, arts, finance, and real estate. Um, when you look at the, uh, we'll go into Tarrant County next, which is the county of our subject property, but um, regardless of uh, Dallas County or the DFW as a whole, neither had manufacturing or retail as an economic base analysis or as an economic base in the market. However, when you turn to Tarrant County specifically, you see that manufacturing, retail, admin and waste services and accommodation and food services have all been added as economic basis. We believe these manufacturing, retail, admin and waste services uh, and even you know, warehousing accommodation and food could all be potential users of our space, whether we do land that one large e-brand retail uh, client or we have to break that up into admin waste and logistics, um, we have a need based off the economic base in Tarrant County for this product. As I said, all the new economic bases uh, are industries that support demand in industrial space. Um, when we did look at Tarrant County, the total economic base came out to about 82,000 or 83,000 employees, providing a dynamic a uh, multiplier of 11.04 and a population to employee ratio of 1.14. With Fort Worth's expected population growth of 2.4% per year, we can see how these numbers will continue to add uh, employees and uh, businesses to the market that are creating demand for new space. Furthering that and taking a deeper dive into the Tarrant County submarket analysis, we can see that in this market, uh, annual growth rent has trended positive at 15.3%. Um, rents expected to peak at 15% uh, in Q2 of this year, I guess, and then we're going to continue to go up through 2026 in the uh, specialized logistics and flex space. The rents for the Northeast Tarrant Alliance area are slightly slower than the rest of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, as you can see by the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth line being this dark blue line and the Northeast Terrence Alliance being slightly under it um, with the yellow line here. Look at the supply in the current market. Um, there is some competition. Uh, that was one of the risks that we looked at with this de development was oversaturation in the market. However, we think with the economic basis that we've identified and the uh, demand that there will be in the future that we think that this product is still a viable option even given the uh, existing competition. And that being said, uh, just to talk about the market as a whole, Eric, would you like to talk about the uh, market condition? Sure thing, good stuff, Brand. Uh, a couple items to note right here is that out of the three sub-markets captured in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, just over 50% of the positive net absorption has occurred over the last 12 months within the Terrence Alliance, Tarrant County areas, which is where our project uh, is located. Um, and the submarket, with the highest level of growth out of the, in all the sub counties in Dallas is in the upper great Southwest district. And if you're wondering where that is, rest, you are correct in your assumption, Tarrant County is where you will find that district. Um, and where that is also where the greatest amount of rent growth is occurring, as uh, Brand pointed out earlier. If you look at the graph, you're going to notice at the start of 2023, uh, a, a very big drop in uh, vacancy rate as the doubt the rest of Dallas vacancy starts to shoot up in 2024 where uh, you'll notice the Northeast Tarrant Alliance vacancy trends downward our goal is to provide uh, our site uh, we want to deliver occupancy to uh, our client um, by the uh, first quarter of 2024 as you'll see that is when the last it's one of the last quarters that the absorption outpaces the net deliveries uh, thank you we are determining our property to have a cap rate of 6.2 percent uh, with an average price per square foot of 134 dollars 
and an average average vacancy uh we you know expect to have a 9.6 percent uh vacancy uh with uh the ability to charge ten dollars per square foot of rent uh, it should be noted that the average sales price is 12 million dollars and um yeah next please uh okay uh, in this, we can see that the sales volume is continually uh, increasing uh, with sales volume totaling 4.1 billion during the last 12 months. Prices have continued to escalate and we do not expect any slowdown anytime soon given the expansion of the e-commerce industry. Uh, cap rates are currently stabilized at 5.5% and the total sales volume is currently being eaten up by private equity firms and institutional investors, as well as REITs and private investors. As you can see, we uh, out of our competitors, um, the amount of square footage absorbed per building just keeps increasing with Dalport Trade Center leading with over a million square feet. And uh, that, they're not alone with High Point coming in into a second, South Point Logistics, just over a million. Um, the design of the industrial uh, buildings just keeps increasing for more and more um, capacity for the rise of e-commerce, population growth as well to accommodate uh, all of the logistics that are taking place right now in Dallas. Um, and there's just, there's absolutely no vacancy amongst our competitors. That's kind of the big takeaway here is that, um, and provides us the basis and the confidence with the, um, that we have chosen the right product at the right size um, for the future of uh, uh, Dallas as a, a key logistics hub in the, uh, greater fight for the e-commerce market. Um, the market, the, some of the key points uh, that allow Dallas to uh, create that um, leadership is that the International uh, Inland Port of Dallas, the Fort Worth Alliance Airport, and three major interstates that all surround the Tarrant County uh, area. Um, so in conclusion, there's a uh, while absorption got off to a slow start this year, construction is at an all-time high with over 72 million feet currently in development. The overall vacancy rate increased just slightly this quarter as over 7.3 million square feet was added to the inventory. Developers continue to uh, dig on as construction record, record amounts of new inventory with uh, many refusing to price their product until completion to maximize the market. Overall, market sentiment is that DFW is still one of the best places in the country for growth, and it should remain that way for many years to come. Thanks, Eric. Well, we are yep. Blue Mountain Properties, and we appreciate you listening today, and uh, thanks for your time. Thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our professor. <laughs> Thank you. Now, if I can figure out how to stop recording. <laughs> <laughs>